nerves can regenerate if their axons are cut but their cell bodies are preserved in the peripheral nervous system. But in the central nervous system, almost there is no regeneration. So that's why this means that the central nervous system has to be highly protected because there is no way that it, if it is injured, there is no way that it can be repaired. Today, we are going to study some of these structures that protect the central nervous system represented in the spinal cord. And you can see here in this section, just I want to or, uh, orient you, here's the anterior part. You can see a vertebral body. This is a, a transverse section. And this one is a vertebral canal. And it contains the spinal cords surrounded by the meninges. Here, this is the region of the lamina. You remember the parts of the vertebra, there's a spinous process, and there are laminae, and this is the body of the vertebra. And in, in between the body and the vertebral arch is the vertebral canal. So the first protective covering here comes from the vertebral column, the bone and the ligaments that connect between the bones. And then we have like a cushion of fat and connective tissue in this area. Of course, this is cleaned and dissected and the fat has been removed. And this is called the epidural space. It's outside the meninges, outside the first layer of meninges, which is called the dura mater. And then we have the meninges. The meninges here are called the spinal meninges, but these spinal meninges are the same as the cranial meninges, which are surround the brain. So they, they, they will continue with each other. There's a slight difference between them, but generally they are in three layers. So the outermost layer, which is the tough layer, is called the dura mater, and the term dura means tough. And then uh, deep to it is another one, it's called the arachnoid mater. And then the pia mater, which is directly applied to the spinal cord. So that will be the dura, the region of the dura. Here will be the region of the arachnoid. That will be the pia. And you can see that there is a wide space between the arachnoid and the pia mater. This is called the subarachnoid space. And it is this space that contains the cerebrospinal fluid. So the fluid that surrounds the brain, that surrounds the spinal cord is called cerebrospinal fluid, ependymal cells. These are the cells that produce the cerebrospinal fluid. And of course, having the cerebrospinal fluid around the central nervous system uh, provides another protection for the, for the central nervous system. Now let's go into more details of the meninges. As I mentioned that they are three layers. The outermost layer, which you can see it here in gray, this one is the dura mater. Please note that the, the dura mater, it is with one T, not matter. We deal with white matter and gray matter with CT. But when, we, when it comes to the dura, arachnoid, and pia, we say mater. Mater comes from matron. So these layers, matron like mother, so these layers, they surround the central nervous system like a mother surrounds the, the baby. That's why it was translated as such. In fact, this was directly translated from an Arabic term which describes these layers. So it's called Umm al dimagh which means that the mother of the brain. And it was directly translated as the dura mater in, in this case. In, in many cultures, they use father of, mother of, son of to describe certain things. Like, for example, even like in Scotch, they use like McDonald, son of Donald. Or in Russian, they use of, which like Antonov, son of Antony, or something like that. So uh, these are used in different cultures, son of, mother of. So this is mother of the brain. Dura mater. It's the outermost layer. It is consisting of tough, dense, irre irregular connective tissue. And then there's a very thin space, almost negligible, between it and the arachnoid. The arachnoid is this pinkish one, the arachnoid mater. It is directly applied to it. It's like it's on the other side. There's only a very thin layer of uh, interstitial fluid in between them, and they are fused together. And um, the arachnoid means like uh, spider, arachne means a spider, so it is uh, consisting of loose connective tissue, loose with collagen fibers. And as I mentioned, it fuses with the inner surface of the dura mater, 
and deep to it is the cerebrospinal fluid. You can see here that this layer, which is directly applied to the spinal cord or the brain, is the pyometer. And this is the arachnoid, and then the space in between them is called the subarachnoid space, which contains the cerebrospinal fluid. I will show that to you in this diagram. Probably it will be much clearer, maybe. Just to orient you about this uh, picture, this is a picture taken from a dissection from the back. So the lamina has been removed with the spine. They have been taken away and the dural sheath has been cut. And so you can see what is inside the dura. If you look at this layer, this is in fact two. If you look at it from this side, then it is the dura, it is the tough part. If you look at it from the inside, then you can see it is smooth, glistening part. This is the arachnoid mater, but they are fused together. From one side is dura, from the other side is the arachnoid mater. The pia mater is this grayish, highly vascular layer, which surrounds the spinal cord. And you can see that there is a wide space in between them, which is the subarachnoid space, because it is between the arachnoid and the pia, so it is below the arachnoid so it is the subarachnoid space and it contains the cerebrospinal fluid there is no space separating the pia from the central nervous system it is directly applied to it the other thing about the pia which is shown here in this dissection is that the pia has lateral extensions like small teeth so these are lateral extensions we can see one of them here on either side of the spinal cord but if we take the entire length of the spinal cord then we will find that the pia mater has multiple of these denticulations small teeth called the denticulate ligament and this denticulate ligament obviously it is anchoring the spinal cord it is for the holding the spinal cord anchoring it because it's attached to the dura remember that this spinal cord is floating in fluid so it needs something to anchor it from the side. So it is, this is very important for anchoring the spinal cord, the denticulate ligament. It is nothing but a, a fold of pia mater, extending between the pia and the arachnoid mater.